The following is a presentation of the Pro Wrestling Report. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. Good evening and welcome to Sudden Impact Radio, exactly 10 o'clock central here uh, on Blog Talk Radio. I am the man they call me in, and we are watching Impact Wrestling right now. The Cowboy, James Storm, bleeding profusely. He is wearing the mask that is made of crimson in the, well, not the center of the ring, but just to the side of the ring. Uh, James, Worm, uh, James Storm, bloodied, beaten, battered, and uh, cannot go on in this match Basically, this was supposed to be for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Not going to happen tonight. Uh, Bobby Roode, Robert Roode, if you will, standing on the side. Um, allegedly, the one in, uh, responsible for all the uh, beatdown on Cowboy James Storm, but no proof yet. I think a, a good heel push should be the right thing for Bobby Roode as champion. I think it really gives him something to move forward with. But anyway, here we are, Sudden Impact Radio. You're listening to Blog Talk Radio. I'm the man they call me that, a part of the Pro Wrestling Report. Um, If you want to have one of your tweets read tonight, don't forget to follow us on Twitter using the hashtag Sudden Impact. Also, you can uh, check us out on the Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Report. I'm also on Facebook as well at the man they call me that, and on Twitter at WCW Meathead. Hey, if you want to call into the program tonight, the number to call in, area code 347-996-5278. Area code 347-996-5278. We're going to be talking Impact Wrestling tonight, and we're going to run down the card going into this Sunday's pay-per-view of Turning Point. Also, don't forget, this Sunday we're going to be having a live post-show right after the pay-per-view. A couple uh, couple surprises going on with that show. Maybe a guest host, maybe a surprise call-in, who knows, we'll see, so uh, make sure to join us this Sunday. So, let's talk about Impact tonight, don't forget also the channel sphere is wide open and ready to go as well, but let's talk about Impact tonight. Show gets started off, our first match was Crimson beating Pope, uh, opening match, now uh, as you just seen in the ring, Bobby Roode with a surprise roll-up pin on the Cowboy James Storm again, that a a heel-ish move as he bounces around, bounces around holding the belt. He goes, "I did it! I'm the I'm the champion! I'm the champion!" So maybe that cements Bobby Roode as a heel performer, but staying on his way out. And uh, for those of you that haven't read the spoilers yet, there's going to be an announcement on what's going to happen at the pay-per-view next by the Stinger. He's going to mention who's going to be facing Bobby Roode for the main event for the championship belt. But anyways. Show opens up tonight with uh, Crimson and Pope. Crimson going over Pope. Uh, It's nice to see the Black Pope finally getting some TV time, but uh, unfortunately Pope part of the 2011 version of the Job Squad as he does the pin one, two, three. After that, we have Garrett Bischoff and Gunner. Now, Garrett Bischoff, you've heard me lament. You've heard me kind of go on for the last few weeks about how Garrett Bischoff is getting more TV time than, say, and I've heard some of the listeners and some of the fans say more TV time than Kaz is. Kaz is on TV right now, but he's nothing more than a guy that just hangs around with guys that wrestle in the ring. I mean, Kaz, I don't know if he deserves the TV spot, to be honest with you, but that's it's another conversation. That's another, um, you know, uh, topic for another week some other time. So Garrett Bischoff apparently going to get the push. I don't want to see him on TV, but then again, you know, he's got a story to tell. He's, you know, uh, being pushed by Ric Flair. He's being pushed by Bischoff. Those guys are working with him in the ring. You know, you've also got Gunner who, you know, is getting the push to work with, uh, you know, Garrett, uh, excuse me, Eric Bischoff and Ric Flair as well. So it's not as bad as it could be. It could be a lot worse. You could have You know, say, I don't know, um, uh, whatever. You can have Scott Steiner on every week. 
I mean, would you really want to see that? No, I'd rather see Garrett Bischoff because he's new. He's something different. So I guess that we'll, we'll keep putting up with Garrett Bischoff and we'll keep putting up with the fact that he's on TV. But unfortunately, I, I don't find it entertaining right now. I really don't. So what are you going to do? Garrett Bischoff uh, with technically a win over Gunner, and you know there was a stipulation in that that said that if Garrett was to you know win the match, Sting gets to rewrite Eric Bischoff's contract. How much investment do you really have in that? I don't have a ton. I don't know how much you have, but it is what it is. Hey, Jesse Sorensen also uh, took on Zima Ion in a X Division match, and it wasn't that bad. Again, I don't understand the Jesse. Why bring the football? It's it has a such an independent, just backyard wrestling, not to slam it and not to use it as a, such a dirty, filthy, derogative word, but it just has such a second-rate feel to it. And, hey, here's a football I bought at Kmart. It cost me three bucks. Let me sign it for you, kid, and now you got something special. Got to drop it. I, I think it's stupid. It's you got to move on. If you're going to give away stuff to the fans, give away some of your own merchandise so that way they can wear it. That way they can show it around to their friends, not just some random plastic football that you picked up at the you know, convenience store and you hand it out to a kid as a gimmick as part of your entrance. So, Anyways, Jesse Sorensen beating uh, Zima Ion. Kid Cash coming back out. and You know, you get this feeling when Kid Cash is talking. He, he's got some intensity to him. He, he can talk a little bit. He has put in 20 years in a ring. But if he talks too long, it feels like he's – He's stretching for something to say. It feels like he's kind of scratching his head, like he only can talk so much. He needs somebody to go back and forth with him so while the other person is talking, he can collect his thoughts, spit out another 30 seconds, and then you know wait for the other guy to talk and respond. He needs to go back and forth, back and forth. I'm a guy like that too. You know, I can talk for a while, but I'm a lot more effective when I have a back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, Kid Cash, we're buying it for the first couple of seconds, but then when you're – you're stuck, and Jesse's not saying anything when he's just standing there kind of like a frightened young kid, which he looks like. I mean, yeah, he can move. He's athletic. But to be honest, are you buying him as a real wrestler other than a guy that jumps around and spins around? I'm not. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm enjoying watching him wrestle, but I don't buy it. I don't have an investment in it. So, anyways, uh, Kid Cash, apparently the one in charge of Austin Aries, or at least that's the way he sold it to you, Kid Cash is the one that made a three-way for the pay-per-view this Sunday at Turning Point. So it'll be Kid Cash, Austin Aries, and Jesse Sorensen for the X Division title. So, you know, they put a beat down on uh, uh, Sorensen at the end, and I guess that's – and, you know, being the champion, wouldn't you think you'd have to say what the match is? But apparently he follows along with what Kid Cash does. You know, I don't know. It is what it is. So, hey, but one of my favorite spots of the night, again, with the girls – now, got into a little bit of a discussion last week about some people not finding any interest in the girls wrestling. Some people thinking that's interest. I, I enjoy watching the knockouts wrestle. I especially enjoy watching the tag team knockout matches. Now, the singles are fine, but when it's tag team, you can hide a little bit of maybe, uh, it's not that it's conditioning with the girls, but you know, kind of like I said with Kid Cash and his promos, You can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. When you have the four of them in there, a lot more room to go back and forth. You can do a lot more high-intensity stuff. So Gail Kim and Madison Rain, they defended their knockout titles against Velvet Sky and Mickie James. Velvet Sky, by the way, uh, this was definitely a little bit more uh, TVMA, if you will, because Velvet Sky, I swear I saw it winking at me. That's how small her gimmick was today. I swore, I swore, I swore it winked at me. You know, I was thinking Arby's the entire match and trying to watch the match at the same time. But the girls looking real good. Again, I thought a solid match. So, you know, worth watching. Good television. Hey, I got four calls on hold. We're going to take those when we come back from the break. You're listening to Sudden Impact Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio.
Welcome back to Sudden Impact Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. I am the man they call Meathead. And, again, we've got calls on hold. We're going to get to those in just a moment. Don't forget, if you want to have some of your tweets possibly right on the show, make sure you're using hashtag Sudden Impact. Also hit us up on the Twitter, the Facebook, and in the chat, Osphere. Let's go right to the phones. We're going to start off with area code 269. 269, make sure you give us your first name and the state you're calling from. Go ahead. Hey, it's David from Michigan. Hey, David from Michigan. What's going on? Nothing. Hey, I was at that show last Friday night where AJ hurt his ankle. Okay. How was the overall experience for you? I was good. It was my second show. It was was a good show, too. Okay. What was that? Uh, What did the crowd look like? It was a good crowd. Okay. I mean, I know Hero said he was there, and he said it looked about 500 people. I mean, that's not a huge crowd, but... Right, it's not a huge crowd, but, you know, again, oh, yeah, was but it a PA hot crowd? But does great house shows, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, you would think the W would do something more like that, where they have those uh, autograph signings. If you buy this, you can get an autograph or a picture with so-and-so, and you know, but they don't. The reason WWE doesn't do that is because they don't need to do it, really. I mean, they they carry their name. TNA does that as a gimmick to try to get you to come in the door, to try to get you to lay down some money. So they have to do that. And I'm not against it. You know, Indies do it. Uh, TNA has to do it. I'm not against it. I think it's a great fan interaction thing to do. But WWE, again, with maybe an elitist attitude, feels they don't have to do it. That's too bad. But with all the back talking about tonight, um, very – in Meakin or Macon, Georgia is the name of it, I think, where they're at. Right. Macon. Yeah, well well, I'm sure you know this being the WCW guy that you are. That was mm-hmm. where um, uh, Scott Hall first the town anyway that where Scott Hall first showed up in WCW. Yeah, and you know, that was probably the same building too. And uh you know, yeah. speaking of the building. Of we've seen, yeah, we've seen the we've seen the building the last two weeks. Um, yeah. With the exception of a couple small spots, I thought they did a great job of hiding the fact that everything on the hard camera side was empty, and that's okay. Yeah, I you don't mind see it that. Tonight. And what you're talking about, Velvet? I just re DVR that. I think you're right. <laughs> I think I it went back at me. and rewind that a few times. Like, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> that's right. Anything else? And let me ask you: pass or fail tonight? Overall, the show, uh, besides the X Division match. Which I wish they would have went longer. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it was a good show. I mean, the knock, like I tweeted you on a, a single message and said about um, knockouts, a great match, a good tag right. match. And, um, uh, and surprisingly enough, the match, besides the last few seconds of with Ronnie being in there, which is horrible, right. it was a good tag match as well. I think Robbie E, I mean, he just. He has something with those. Him and Robbie, what, T? Yeah, those two have something uh, well, together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, Robbie T and Robbie E. Um, honestly, that match should have ended with Robbie T taking the pin because you make Robbie E look weak because you just got pinned from a guy from the Jersey Shore. Nobody. But, and that yeah, one was that oh. jump. Who knows? And uh, we'll get into the banana hammock later. So, again, I appreciate you calling. Uh, I'll take yeah, a pass. I have to say it was a pass. I mean, the whole show, it was like a lot of wrestling on this show. Right. Yeah, yep. that's a lot to do with Brother Love now, though, too, so that's good. <laughs> cool. All right, well, thanks for calling in. Again, give us a call next week. Uh, we're going to jump into the I'm next call. Right. You guys won't be on next week, will you? Well, I'm on uh, every week. The radio show won't be on Monday, but we'll be doing the right oh, okay. after I didn't know. Okay. Gotcha. So, yeah, give us a call next All right. week. All right, well, thanks. Bye. All right, we're going to jump into another call. Area code 832, you're going to be on next. Area code 832, I need your first name, and where are you calling from? 832, go ahead. 832 going once, 832 going twice. Hey. Yes, 832, go ahead. Hey, it's, uh, it's Ricardo from Houston. Okay, what's up? What's up, man? I'm just, I'm, I'm, um, I love all, I, I love all the love I'm getting in the comments from last week's okay. show. But anyways, uh, this week's uh, show, what is it with you in the women's division in TNA? What is it with me in the women's division or the women's division in general? Well, in, T- well, in TNA, I'm not, I mean, I never hear you say anything about 
the WWE's women's division and why should you? It's horrible. The reason but, that I don't talk about the WWE's women's division is because you're on Sudden Impact Radio. We're talking about TNA here. No, 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 no. Prime, Hold on, let me finish. If I were doing primetime or if I were doing, you know, another uh, show that was WWE-based, I'd talk about that. But here we're talking about TNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not asking you to talk about it, but I'm just saying, what is it, what is it you, what's, the, what's the deal with you in the women's division, period? I mean, I mean why do you like it so much? Need, why do I like it? I'm entertained by it. And isn't that really what we're all looking for? We're enter- we want to be entertained. So if I tell, if I give my opinion and say that I'm entertained by the women's division in TNA, I'm entertained. That's just it. I like watching faster-paced matches where it looks like they're actually wrestling instead of girls slapping and being very careful and doing, <coughs> excuse me, what looks like very painfully choreographed moves versus what looks like a little bit more of a shoot version, even though it's not shoot, but what looks like a little bit more of a shoot version than anything else. So that is why I am entertained by the knockouts. But at a, at a, today, at a tonight show, that and the X Division was the only thing that entertained you? No, I didn't say the, inter, the X Division actually entertained me. I was entertained by the rest of the match. And again, I'm going to run down the rest of the card. So if what you're calling for is just to ask why I was entertained, I'm going to run down on the show. What I want to know is, did you think Impact was a pass or fail? Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. I, I need it's your a, opinion. It's a, it's a fail. It, it's a, in my opinion, it's a fail. I, and, and the reason why it's a fail <laughs> reason why it's a fail is explain. I mean, give a give a. I, I, give I, I, a, I don't. I don't, I don't like. Okay, first of all, the Ronnie thing was stupid. The guy could bar- could barely. Sl- uh, power, I mean, scoop slam uh, Robbie E. I mean, it was just atrocious watching that. Right, and I didn't watching, think it was an entertaining that. match either. And uh, <clears throat> I do, I do like what they did with Robert Root at the end when he just did the cheap roll up on Storms. Absolutely, I was entertained by that as well. I, I, I thought, thought that, that was, I thought that was, and it was, that was a way to funny. send it off. But other than that, the show's flat. I, mean, what, okay. I didn't get excited about anything. I was just like, okay, okay, fair enough. Next thing. And then that's that's your opinion, and you know we'll take it for that. So we got a pass and a fail. Anything else tonight? Uh, no, sir. You have a good night. Yep. And thanks for calling. All right. So we got one pass. We got one fail. Um, I got two calls on hold. I'm going to take the first one. Then we're going to jump to break. So let's go real quick to area code two five six. Area code two five six. The city and state that you're calling from. Go ahead. Hello. 256. Yes. Uh, this, this this is Michael Bass calling from uh, Gaston, Alabama. Okay. How did you like the show tonight? What do you think? Pass or fail? It was actually pretty good. Okay. What'd you like about it? I like uh like to you talk about the women's division and where it's going. Mhm. Yeah. Okay. And what was your favorite part of the show? Uh, I was actually entertained when Sting came out. <laughs> you, were actually, you were entertained when yeah. Sting came out. How long was he on the screen for? I don't know. I was just a, I was just a big fan of Sting. Okay. Gotcha. Very big I'll fan. Get into, I'll, I'll get into what I think about Sting on the uh, next segment here when we run down the rest of Impact, but... uh. You think uh, pass, huh? Oh, it, it passed. I just okay. didn't like. I just didn't like that uh, Robert Root and how they got Robert Root going. I just don't like. It. Oh, you you're not agreeing with him being a heel now? No, I'm not. I don't. I don't I'm not feeling it. I'm okay, not feeling it fair now. enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, thanks again for calling. You can always call in next week. Appreciate the call. All right. All right. So we've got two passes. We've got one fail. Again, everybody's opinion matters. We're going to take our final break. When we come back, we'll run down to Facebook. If any comments on there, we'll also talk about the Twitter. We'll run down the rest of Impact, and we'll talk about the pay-per-view this Sunday. You're listening to Southern Impact Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. Welcome back to Sudden Impact Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. I am the man they call me, Ed. We've got about uh, seven, eight minutes left. We're going to run down one more caller. We've also got some Twitter feed uh, responses that we want to use. Again, if you're replying to the show, make sure you're using the hashtag Sudden Impact. 
and we're going to take a look in the chat. Osphere also run down the card for this Sunday's pay-per-view. Uh, we're going to go now out to area code 318. First thing I need is your name and the state you're calling from. Area code 318, go ahead. Hey, this is Will from Louisiana. How you doing tonight? Hey, Will from Louisiana. What's up, bud? I'm not much. Uh, just got off watching Impact, and uh, I think it was a really good show this week. Uh, I like how they're focusing more on original talent now than what they have been in the past couple of years or so. Gotcha. So you would say overall a pass? Absolutely. The ending was very good with Storm uh, faking. Well, I'm not going to say faking, but Storm looking uh, horrible. And then AJ proposing the challenge to Robert Roode, and Robert Roode is looking like a big heel right now. Congrats to him. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, that ending, I thought, set up him being the heel finally that we kind of were left in the lurch on last week, and we'll see how it goes on the pay-per-view this Sunday if he goes full-born, you know, full-blood heel, or if he's still kind of murking around in the waters. So, yeah, I thought it was a decent show as well. Yeah, I especially like when uh, he's having that interaction with the referee saying the match is over, right? He goes, no. He goes, you didn't end the match? No. And then he gets on the, the pin, and then he, he's uh, whipping his legs up and down, a whole Ric Flair heel style, just fantastic. Oh, yeah. And who better to teach him than the man with you know that's in the company with him that was just on the show earlier, Ric Flair himself. So I wouldn't doubt that he's probably going to Flair and getting tips. What should I? What do you think I should do here? What do you think I should do here? Hey, that's fortune, baby. Yeah, so overall a pass. I appreciate it. Uh, are you going to be watching the pay-per-view this Sunday? Uh, probably so. I do want to see AJ versus Rude. I'm a big AJ fan, and Robert Rude's been growing on me, so I'll probably buy it. Yeah, perfect. All right, well, I appreciate the call. Again, give us a call next week. We always appreciate everybody calling in. Have a great night. Yes, sir, you too. All right. So right now we've got, it looks like, three passes one fail, and again, there's no issue with the fail. I don't have any problem with anybody that wasn't entertained by it. So uh, let's take a quick look at uh, everybody that used the hashtag Sudden Impact and see what they were saying about Impact tonight. Um, one of them definitely said, I love the new persona of Bobby Roode, uh, definitely a heel, also looking like a young Triple H. Eh, I could go with that. That's, that's, uh, that's not bad. I guess if you're thinking young, you know, uh, up-and-coming type guy, I'll go with that. Also, uh, we got that from Aaron BSC. And uh, let's see, Chill Mascaris says, it's too bad that this, and that's uh, not quotes, those are stars, is the company with the best wrestlers and lots of cash if they get Ronnie from Jersey Shore and an MMA guy. Sudden impact. He probably feels the show is a fail, and there's, again, nothing wrong with him thinking it's a fail. There's nothing you know, wrong with anybody's opinion, but um, I can understand where you're coming from. I was kind of salty that the MMA guy was there over the AJ and uh, Christopher Daniels match. I didn't like the placement of it, but then again, where else are you going to put him? If you're going to bring that guy in, are you going to put him over the girls? No, because they think the girls are what people tune in for and hear Taz and Tanae talk about the girls. So then I can put those over to girls. They would think it was a slap to them. So let's just slap around AJ and Christopher Daniels and put an MMA guy talking over their match. You know, it is what it is. So uh, let's see. Chat Osphere. There's a bunch of uh, pops up in there as well. They're, uh, you know, Storm, it, Cowboy James Storm, I think is also legitimate. And by the way, going out to uh, Mal Vinge, I guess. I think. Storm is legitimate. I think he is a legitimate star. But right now, it makes more sense to keep the belt on Bobby Root. And I don't feel as I don't feel as gypped as I did along with you guys too when the Bound for Glory series got paid off and then we got James, you know, Cowboy James Storm as a champ instead of Bobby Root. I feel like we've gotten payoff now that we finally have Robert Roode as champion. And, you know, it's what TNA has been doing now is they're actually, they're giving us that surprise mid Carter that's jumped up. They gave us two, by the way, with Cowboy James Storm and Bobby Roode. They gave us two mid Carters that jumped up, kind of like the, the E did when they had Miz jump up from the mid card and finally, boom, champion. That's what E needs now. And that's what TNA is doing at the moment. So I think it's a great move for them to go ahead and do that. Let's run down the rest of, uh, Impact tonight, by the way. So uh, they set the match, obviously, at Rude and uh, Storm for the night. And Sting announced that it would be a rematch. But what really kind of just sucked the air 
out of the arena, if you ask me, was Ronnie from Jersey Shore and EY versus Robbie E and Robbie T. Eric Young working hard. I know Robbie E's working hard too, and uh, Damian Nelson's next big thing for 2009, Rob Terry, worked hard as well. But that match was just the drizzling. It was, it was what it was. I mean, you're not going to expect Ronnie to come out and put on a five star match, but there's just no point there. So after that, we had AJ Styles taking on Daniels. But how many more times do we have to see AJ Styles go against Daniels? I don't get why we keep seeing this. And then this is going to lead us into Daniels versus RVD at the pay-per-view. So the match of the night, I thought a very hot match. It really was good for the crowd in the arena versus maybe on the TV. It was Anderson, Hardy, and Abyss taking on Steiner, Jarrett, and Bully Ray. All the fake or the false finishes at the end, everybody hitting their finishers. I thought the crowd was huge into it. I thought the crowd was huge into Abyss, just like you know it was tweeted towards me as well. I thought it was a great match. Um, you know, out of the to take us out of the uh, show because the main event with James Storm and Bobby Roode really wasn't a match. It was a roll up for a win and a heel Bobby Roode, who's champion, is now going to go on to the pay per view against AJ Styles. So AJ, who's been kind of just Sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, working with, you know, Daniels over and over, not doing anything, you know, wrestling in his hometown. Finally, he's going to get a main event pay-per-view. So, hey, the pay-per-view this Sunday night, don't forget, be the booker for the pay-per-view. It's going to be on the uh, com website tomorrow. The pay-per-view, Bobby Roode against H.A. Styles, Inc. Inc. against Mexican Americana. It's going to be a six-person tag. Gail Kim versus Velvet Sky for the Knockouts Championship. Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Hardy, Crimson and Matt Morgan. Daniels and RVD, I think it's a stacked pay-per-view. I know I'll be watching, and don't forget the post-show will be live on Blog Talk Radio with maybe a special host, hint, hint, and a special call-in live from the arena. So, again, thank you for joining us right here on Sudden Impact Radio. I enjoy your time, and I enjoy you calling in. We'll talk to you next week. I'm the man they call me to. See you later.